Dr. David Sinclair has made it pretty clear before. If we have more extra energy available, we have more extra energy available to rebuild the roads and rebuild the bridges and rebuild all the things in our body that need rebuilding, potentially for better longevity. Turns out, if you start looking at the research, vitamin D plays a pretty serious role in that. One of the first things we have to look at is we look at health span as it's associated with like obesity. We see that obesity and being overweight could potentially take years off your life, which is not what we want, of course. Well, and then we kind of like connect the dots and we see that being overweight or being obese is the leading cause of vitamin D deficiency. I think it's pretty safe to say that almost everyone knows that vitamin D is a big deal now, but a lot of us still think that it's a vitamin. We forget that it has hormone-like properties and how it affects our body is pretty darn interesting. And I want to clear one thing up once and for all. Okay, vitamin D gets sequestered and locked up in our fat tissue. So the more fat that we have, the more vitamin D gets sucked into it and the less available vitamin D we have. So even if we are loading up copious amounts of vitamin D through our diet, it's pretty hard to actually have it become bioavailable because it gloms onto fat and it gets stored in the adipose tissue. But what does this have to do with aging? Okay, so for years and years and years, we've said, okay, well, being overweight could have a detrimental effect on aging. And it has to do a lot of times with uh, inflammatory responses, right? If we are bombarding our body with inflammatory signals because adipose tissue can be very inflammatory, then maybe we are triggering so much stress onto our cells and stress onto our body that it's causing some premature uh, apoptosis and mutation of cells that's triggering us to, well, just kind of wither away. But what if we look at the relationship with vitamin D? Okay, because it has to do a lot with glucose. Now I'm gonna break this down, it's gonna make some perfect sense. I know I started out a little bit complex, but I promise it'll all make sense. After this video, I also want you to check out a brand called Ujido Matcha. I'm a big fan of drinking green tea, okay? I have a cup of coffee in the morning and then I switch over to green tea, and I usually have matcha green tea because it's very good for me. I like it. I like how it makes me feel. I like the fact that I know where it comes from. And Ujido Matcha is a 187 year old matcha company that harvests it properly. They do it in the right region of Japan, in the right region with the shade, get the really good green tea leaves that are needed to be pulverized into a matcha powder. So anyhow, they have single serve packets. They make it super easy and very convenient. And there's a special link down below because they're a big supporter of this channel. So check them out. There was a study published not that long ago in the journal Nutrition that demonstrated that taking in vitamin D supplements, like supplementing with vitamin D, actually had a positive effect on glucose and insulin levels. Okay, and it activated what's called PPAR. And I talk about that a lot, but let me put this into context. Basically what that meant is that by adding vitamin D in, you had the potential of your cells being able to utilize fat as a fuel source easier, even if you're not necessarily on a lower carb diet, right? If your body is using fats easier, you have less what is called glycolytic flux. So when electrons from glucose are coming into a cell to create energy, they are required to attach to something called NAD, okay? When they attach to that NAD, the NAD is like a shuttle carrier and carries it into the power plant where it ultimately gets manufactured into energy. Well, that NAD, that little shuttle bus, is very important for other mechanisms in the body too. So when we run on an alternative fuel such as fat, fats do not require the NAD shuttle. They can get into the power plant by themselves. They can walk in. They don't need to take a shuttle bus. Imagine going to Disneyland, and instead of having to take the shuttle, you could walk right in. So that's what's happening there. What does that do? Well, that leaves the shuttle bus available to do other things. So imagine this shuttle bus that was gonna go to Disneyland, but now doesn't have any people. This shuttle bus can now go and drive people somewhere else, or it can drive to, I don't know, help build a bridge somewhere, or it can drive to help rebuild some tissue somewhere in your body. It can have potentially longevity inducing effects and things that are good for your health span. More available NAD means more availability to rebuild and to, well, help assist us with living a good, healthy life. What does this have to do with vitamin D so much? Well, again, the vitamin D makes it so that we potentially are more fat adapted and can have this happen, but there's more to it than just that. Vitamin D activates what is called PGC1A. Okay, now PGC1A is something that we rave about when we're talking about fasting, something we rave about when we're talking about even 
keto or paleo, one of the biggest benefits of doing those dietary patterns is the activation of this amazing PGC1A. So what the heck is it? Well, PGC1A is something that turns on the mitochondria's what's called biogenesis. It allows us to create more energy factories, more power plants. Without PGC1A being turned on, we don't have the genes to really build more power plants. Pretty cool stuff. So we have more PGC1A when we take vitamin D. So more power plants. More and more am I realizing that vitamin D is not even necessarily a supplement. It's something that's just critical and should be in our body. That's why we convert it and synthesize it from the sun. It's that important. But it doesn't stop there. It gets even more insane when you start looking at the longevity piece. One of the things that NAD, the little shuttle bus, likes to go drive over to to help out with is something called sirtuins. Okay, so NAD, when it's not occupied by carrying glucose into a cell, what that NAD does is it drives over and it turns on a big old switch called sirtuins, mainly sirt1. And CERT1 turns on a whole cascade of different genes and a whole cascade of different enzymatic and just responses in the body that all have to do with longevity. And Dr. David Sinclair, who I love so much because his research is so good, he's so good at breaking it down so simply. He's talked about this for years and years and years and how we can help support our NAD levels. Well, again, we activate sirtuins because of NAD. Guess what? Turns out that vitamin D directly activates sirtuins too. So we have another way to go activate sirtuins. But again, let's put some things together. Someone that's very obese, their vitamin D levels are low. So one could argue that they're not aging very well, right? Like they're running into that issue. They're not having that support that they need for longevity. But then you look at, they lose weight. Well, there's a lot of factors that are helping them potentially age better as they lose weight. But one of which is the liberation, the more bioavailable vitamin D. So which came first, the chicken or the egg? I'm purely hypothetical here, but could it be that the vitamin D is actually activating more sirtuins, helping them live a better life? Okay, then when you look at the inflammation side of things, it gets really intriguing. Vitamin D can help modulate inflammation at what is called the NLRP3 inflammasome level. This is something we know. As we age, overweight, obesity, more inflammation, more, you know, just pain, right? Not feeling good. Well, how does that play a role again with, once again, Vitamin D, vitamin D directly reduces that NLRP3 inflammasome. So maybe we have the modulation of inflammation that's working there. So we have multiple different avenues. We create more energy powerhouses to create more energy and more abundance there. We have less glycolytic flux and more ability to use fat, leaving more shuttle buses available to rebuild roads and do other things. Okay. We have direct sirtuin activation, which assists with, of course, all the longevity genes and those components, right? Then we have the NLRP3 inflammasome modulation. So we feel good while we're doing all this. This is just the beginning and I'm keeping it very simple. But what is the pragmatic thing here? Do you supplement with vitamin D or do you lose weight to increase your levels of vitamin D? I wanna make sure that I go on record and don't make any crazy weird claims. Vitamin D is not necessarily associated as a supplement with losing weight. What is associated with losing weight is increasing vitamin D levels. But those vitamin D levels are just getting liberated from the fat, right? So I'm not gonna say that you could take a vitamin D supplement and you're going to lose weight. What I would recommend is losing weight and releasing your vitamin D levels and then maintaining supplementation with vitamin D. And that varies widely based upon where your numbers are at. But I would recommend that you share this video with people that are maybe hesitant to use vitamin D because it's not just a vitamin. It is something that is integral. And if you get your levels checked, you'll paint a picture of exactly what you need to do with your vitamin D supplementation. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.